Most weapons in Dragon's Dogma 2 you can obtain by simply buying from the local armory shop. But there are several incredible weapons unique to certain mysterious locations you must discover on your own. So today I present 6 fun and powerful secret weapons that you need to try. Alrighty then, let's jump right into it. Coming straight out the gate hot and heavy. Literally, we have two fiery weapons. First up, and potentially the most powerful weapon in this entire video, the Cinder Spine Hammer. Who doesn't love a big ol' blazing shkabunker? A infernal unga boonga. Even ignoring the whopping 150% fire damage, its straight attack power is one of the highest the warrior can wield. So it's got the damage and the drip to go with it. A deadly combination. <laughs> The blazing heat emanating from the top of this hammer is the cherry on top for any badass warrior build. The cinder spine can be found in the mountain base cave down in the south. It's pretty easy to find, you just gotta be thorough when exploring the cave, and if you're like me, a veteran of adventure RPGs like this, then you can probably explore caves in a video game more proficiently than navigating a social gathering. Finding virtual chest is one of your greatest, most valuable skill sets in life. So yeah, I'm confident you can find these weapons, because you will also find the Molten Fury Mace in the same mountain cave. The Molten Fury is indubitably one of the best weapons for a fighter. Some of these elemental weapons sacrifice straight attack power in exchange for the elemental inflictions. But not this guy, no sir. The Molten Fury does not fuck around. He's got the mighty flames and a high strength power. Now what's great about having an everlasting elemental enhancement is now you don't have to rely on your mage to cast Fire Boon or Ice Boon or whatever. The mage can instead Instead, enhance your allies with a different element, like ice, empowering your team with multiple damage types for maximum lethality. Just look at this dude, look at this build. Powerful and major style points right there. I showed y'all two pyro fiery weapons, but now I shall provide you with two unique frosty weapons. The coolest bow in the entire game, the Seokad, Seokad, Frost Bow. Though it does not have insanely high damage, the Frost Debilitation is absolutely bonkers. All regular shot arrows will now have Frost Infliction. Plus, you go ahead and use an ice skill like the Frost Seeker Bolt, and its Frost Buildup is increased by 140% on top of what it normally deals. Look at this Chimera. He got stuck in the river so he became drenched and just froze to death. I mean this poor beast could barely stand up on account of me constantly freezing it with the bow. My man really tried, he really did, but he just could not get it up. So this bow is easily obtained in the Sacred Harbor, aka the Kingdom of Pointy-Eared Hooligans. You can buy the seal cod from this lovely lady elf right here. The elvish armory has the Militant Dove Bow too, which also has a unique effect. It will increase your damage taken when attacked, but will regenerate and restore health while standing still. So a decent trade-off considering you're typically standing in the back lines, sending out arrow skills like a deadly display of fireworks. So yeah, hell yeah, I mean I'll take that health regeneration. I'm not worried about the extra damage, I can take a hit and keep going. Yo, oh. dude he's paralyzed. He's paralyzed. Elden King is paralyzed. It is just slightly annoying though because you have to be standing absolutely still, performing no other task. You can't even draw back your bow while healing. I mean, you got a dozen monsters causing chaos all around you, yet you straight up just stand in there, chilling, healing yourself. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of goofy, but hey, it's cool though. Next up, we have two staves found in the same area, the Frigid Finger Staff and the Anathema Arch Staff. The Frigid Finger has frosty elements, very similar to the Frost Bow that I just showcased before. Using this staff now makes your regular magic attacks deal frost buildup, plus will drastically increases the frosty power of ice spells. An extra 50% frost on top of what the ice spells already inflict. Straight up frost-tastic. 
Even its appearance has this cool ice dragon feel to it. The drippy style potential here is very high. It's got solid magic power overall. This staff is perfect for a unique mage build proficient in proccing frost. This bad boy lies in a chest in the Dragon's Breath Tower. A main story quest will bring you to this area, but when you're here, I highly recommend scouring every inch of this tower. There are several weapons and items to find here, including this incredibly awesome Dragonic Shield, the Frigid Finger, and the Anathema. The Frigid Finger is for the Mage Vocation, while Anathema is for a Sorcerer. It comes with the Silence Debilitation, meaning if you use this staff to target other spellcasters, you can silence them. Put them in timeout, give them a good spanking, preventing them from casting further magic. Now this can be used on larger monsters that cast spells too, such as Chimeras. An arch staff with a crown of cursed thorns, plucked from the grave of an eminent sorcerer. Sounds badass enough to me. Would go very well with a dark reddish vibe to your overall outfit. Its magical power is also exceptionally strong, considering how early in the game you can obtain this. Only the very end game arc staves will be more powerful than this. So yeah, when you get to the Dragon's Breath Tower, make sure to thoroughly brush through with a fine tooth comb. And be aware that some of the walls must be destroyed, like this. Have you ever wanted to play as Thor the Edge Lord in a fantasy RPG? Well here you go my friend, the Cyclopedian Thunder Molly Whopper. In comparison to other hammers, such as the Cinderspine, this Cyclopedian may not have the highest strength and magic power, but it does indeed have a stronger knockdown power. And considering the warrior is the chief daddy of dropping monsters on their ass, that extra stagger power is quite useful. Combined with the Ring of Vehemence, which increases your chances of staggering and knockdown even more, you will hit like a train. Straight knocking their socks off like a beast. I mean, I hit this goblin so hard, he damn near forgot how ugly he was. There's just something so satisfying about that tingle of lightning with every swing. Feels like a giant lightsaber hammer. Now you can obtain this hammer by visiting the Dark Beast Den, right down here in Batal. You gotta fight these unique lightning hedgehog creatures. I mean, they're actually pretty damn cool. I, li I like them, but unfortunately, I've never seen them besides this one cave, so I don't know what the deal is with that. But then the chest will be right up yonder. Boom. Got yourself the Thunder Molly Whopper. And now it is your turn, my fellow jabroni. Comment below any unique and cool weapons that you know of that I did not include in this video. Please share it with everyone in the comment section. Drop a like if you made it this far in the video and subscribe for more Dragon's Dogma 2 content. I thank you for watching and I'll talk to you later. Stay golden.